Namaskar and warm greetings from Delnet Developing Library Network, New Delhi, India. Distinguished speaker of this afternoon, Dr. Shubha Nagarkarji, the Associate Professor, Department of Library and Information Science and Coordinator, Center for Publication Ethics, Savitri Bhai Phule, Pune University, Pune. Eminent librarians, library and information science professionals, HODs of various departments, researchers, scholars, the dear students, ladies and gentlemen. I, Sangeeta Kaul, on behalf of Delnet Developing Library Network, New Delhi, extends a very warm, hearty welcome to each one of you for joining us today at this monthly webinar, which is today's webinar on research and publication ethics, role of librarians. We are indeed feeling much proud and happy to have with us a very distinguished speaker of our session today, Dr. Shubha Nagarkarji, who has been very kind uh, and gracious in accepting our kind invite to be there with us this afternoon and to share her vast expertise on the subject with each one of us, we, the library and information science professionals. On behalf of Delnet and on behalf of each one of us here today, we extend a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Shubha Nagarkarji, and once again would like to convey our very you know, sincere gratitude and thanks to you for making it possible for us to have you with us. In spite of your very, very busy, you know, academic schedules, you have been able to, you know, take out some time for us. We remain truly appreciative and you have always been supportive of Delnet and our activities and we remain ever grateful to you for that. So thank you so very much indeed and it's a proud, proud privilege for us to have you with us today. As all of us are knowing about it, that our today's uh, session uh, is on research and publication ethics and we are going to dwell more in detail that how we as a library and information science professionals what are the growing roles of we professionals in order to ensure that we are able to uh, um, uh, to spread that you know and also to help our institutions to develop uh, a kind of an environment in which we, the library and information science professionals, can advocate uh, uh, and also uh, trying to implement, you know, the best practices, which is meant for ensuring, you know, the code of conduct when we are undertaking research and publication ethics. We have a profound speaker who is closely being associated also as not only as a uh, professional who is being at the Department of Library and Information Science at one of the most you know, esteemed uh, university of the country that is Savitri Bhai Pune, uh, Pune University, but more so importantly, she is also the coordinator for Center for Publication Ethics at the university and undertaking you know, various activities in order to ensure that uh, the professionals, the researchers and scholars are getting uh, benefited, you know, uh, out of the experience of the professionals uh, from the libraries. And I think it's, an, uh, it, it's a right uh, opportunity for each one of us uh, to really uh, listen to her and to see that what are those do's and don'ts, what are those uh, kind of best practices that we should try uh, to implement in our respective institutions. And most importantly is the growing role of the library professionals in this particular field and how we can be a contributory factor in ensuring the best qualities in our best practices in our institutions for ensuring the, uh, the proper the research and publication ethics. I have profound privilege in welcoming once again uh, Dr. Shubha Nagarkarji and the privilege in introducing you all uh, to Dr. Nagarkar, who is a Fulbright scholar and currently the prof associate professor at Department of Library and Information Sciences and coordinator Center for Publication Ethics at Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University. At Center for Publication Ethics, uh, Dr. Shubha Nagarkarji has been instrumental in creating and maintaining the research portal of Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University. Since 2018, she is a member of the Empower Committee of the UGC CARE and coordinating the UGC cell of journal analysis established by UGC in January 2019. Uh, she is a recipient of travel grants from the National Science Foundation, Ford Foundation, OCLC USA, and GBIF Copenhagen. Her areas of research are, are bibliometrics, publication ethics, institutional repositories, and digital libraries. Uh, Dr. Nagarka has also published by, uh, by the uh, by Current Science Journal of, Journal of Scholarly Public, uh, Publishing, Annals of Library and Information Studies, Library Review, Library Management. She has been publishing popular library and information science articles in newspapers and on blogs. Recently, her help is acknowledged by the Center for Journalology, Ottawa Hospital, which has recently launched the one-stop shop for predatory journals. I'm also very much 
glad to share with each one of you that Dr. Shubha Nagarkarji is also a practicing yoga uh, practitioner and also more so also as a yoga teacher. So it's not only the field of library and information science that she's contributing, she's also contributing to the field of yoga. And I think we may you know, want to have yet another session by Dr. Shubhaji, when she would be talking about more on the yoga as she also holds a great expertise on the subject. I would not like to stand between you and our, you know, uh, the attendees who, all of them, we have around right now 350 of our uh, colleagues who have joined us from different nooks and parts of the country and from many other countries, you know, who are really looking forward to hearing now from you. I have an immense pleasure in welcoming once again Dr. Shubhda Nagarkarji, and I now would like to request her to kindly convene and uh, commence the session. It's over to you, uh, Dr. Nagarkar, and indeed a proud privilege and honor for us to have you with us this afternoon. It's over to you. Uh, could you please unmute yourself? Uh, Dr. Nagarkar, could you please unmute yourself? Ready? Very sorry for this inconvenience. I don't know, last minute technology always troubles you. So uh, let me share uh, the screen and it is already- uh, It is already there. It is already there. It yes. is very much there, yeah. Okay, so uh, dear all participants, I'm going to share my expertise, whatever I have gained during last few years in this area, research and publication ethics and especially role of librarian in this field. So initially when we started working on it, uh, we thought that many of us thought that what is our role in research when people are doing their research and what we are going to do. We are a facilitator of information and we are helping them to increase their knowledge and what role we are going to make in, in publication and others. Then we, we, we realized that it is our part of our daily work. We are dealing with publications. So let us start with uh, my talk overview, what I'm going to share with all of you. First, I will talk about a little bit because that area, uh, it is different research ethics in different fields. But overall, I will talk research ethics and what kind of misconduct is going on. I will shift later on to publication ethics and especially misconduct and we'll talk on predatory journals. And last, what is our role in this uh, field and whether we, we are fit to do this all work. So let me start with the basic five elements of research. This I could I could uh, write down. Of course, I help. I took help by five laws of library science. And then I think I will start with. You can relate this with our five laws, and then you can see whether research what we are doing is going to be useful. So first is that first element that research is and should be useful to society. Are we thinking when we start our research, do we think that whether it is going to be useful to anyone in the society or not? We hardly think about it, but directly or indirectly, it should get useful. Next is every research is built on previous one, and that is what we call with literature search or literature survey. So we need to know who are the pioneers in our old field of research. Third one is research must be conducted with honesty and that's what we are going to deal in this whole presentation. In research integrity and honesty, whether we are following that, we are following ethics or not. Fourth one, follow the standard publishing practices. This we are going to work on and we are, I'm going to share with unethical practices in publishing and that's what, where we are perfectly fit into this kind of role. Last one is very important. Whenever we start our research, we need to see that because of time limit, we restrict it to certain years, but then think that whether it end up or it opens new frontiers in ideas or process or product. So somebody can take it ahead and that is that should be open to all. Um, next, if you see, this is interesting uh, image I found which is given by given in the book, an introduction to science studies, the philosophy and social aspect of science and technology. Actually, when we earn the degree, doctor of philosophy, nowadays what we are observing, philosophy world has vanished. And we, we hardly learn about the philosophy. 
but this book is very interesting what i found this image is two researchers they are looking at the natural world which is represented by a flower both are observing both are doing some observation one is very happy and one is very suspicious that what what it is but they both talk to each other they communicate they discuss so this these two represent the scientific community and they their communication of their research goes to the public archive that is in libraries and nowadays on internet remember this that everything whatever we write we post it on social media it goes to the public archive somewhere it is going going to be archived for future generations this another image i appropriately uh, i feel is a very appropriate for all of us that it gives three circles uh, at the very uh, intersection of these three circle a publication is so it has many connotations if you see first one is philosophy which is which i just talked we we are now forgetting what is philosophical aspect in my research so philosophy is representing by theory sometimes controversy experiments and that is generating a new knowledge so it goes into publication second is psychology and here we talk about ethical practices sincerity authority and then again experiment which which is knowledge and person and knowledge in these two circle is a common thing third is very very important third one is sociology that whatever we are doing it goes it goes to the society it goes to community and it in the meetings through meetings or through publications so three circles if you see sociology philosophy and psychology are there and these three dimensional discourses of sciences and at publication at very very center i am coming back to this image at the end of my talk so ethics in research i am not going to talk because each and every slide in my this presentation need two hours presentation or two hours workshop or maybe one day workshop which i am not i don't think we have that much of time so ethics is derived from the greek word ethos means custom or character it is a branch of philosophy that studies rightness or wrongness which is good and which is bad the human action and that we learn i think from childhood when our parents are saying don't do this don't do this or do this so we learn that it is it is in our culture in our brain that something is wrong something is bad so it is concern what is good for people and society that is very important good for myself is not i am talking good for people good for society i am talking about it and very much research when it is when we connect it to the ethics or ethics in research when we talk it is definitely for whatever i am doing is going to is it there anything that harmful to the society so ethics in research is important at as it provides ethical guidelines and principles for successful conduct of research to maintain the integrity and avoid research misconduct especially in case of humans and animals everybody many of you are aware of nazi uh, human experimentation where lot of cruelty they uh, we have read and that is a example there are many many such examples we have seen in history and now also so ethical principles one has to follow when they do research and i found this is interesting book by uh, dr resnik very interesting book and this is available in open access as objectivity i am not again going into each one of this but just to keep it in mind that whenever we do research we should have objectivity integrity that is honesty carefulness in handling the data set or collecting the data set even one digit here and there there may cause some different effect of your results openness it should be shareable to everybody and that is why these days whenever you write papers you are uh, many journals they ask your data in open access uh, or in open archives so that others can check it and do the experiment and find out whether you have come up with similar results or not transparency accountability intellectual property confidentiality then responsible publication is again very important i'm going to talk in next few slides about it responsible mentoring of course uh, mentoring is equally uh, uh, vital for students that whatever guidance they are getting from uh, so it should be like uh, 
student teacher relationship is like daughter and son or daughter and uh, mother relationship kind of thing respect to colleagues of course legality non discrimination competency and most important animal care and human subject when you are dealing with animals and humans so there are several uh, policies we have in the world and many uh, policy makers they have done policies and we have to or there are several code of conducts when someone want to do experiment with animals and human as a subject so this part i have talked about how research should do and that is i know it is not enough because of time i have just uh, made it very very crisp research misconduct which i am going to talk and which all librarians and all those who are participants may not be librarians they should know about it and many of you are familiar for them it may be refreshing one for your refreshment or uh, refreshing your knowledge so research misconduct if you see uh, there are many things but i have jotted down few approval and consent approval of a relevant authority whether it is a human or animal from concern authority you have to take permission or approval data accuracy falsification and fabrication and third one is what we call ffp that is plagiarism that manipulation of data and fake data for example somebody is doing research and collect want to collect responses from 100 participants and that person collected only 25 and manipulated or 50 and manipulated it or falsified it that it is collected from 100 it will harmful to the society for example if it is in medical field it is very very difficult conflict of interest that many times my own interest is there or for example i am working in company and producing drugs or any other product but i am uh, just withholding that information and i am selling that product without telling or some kind of uh, other things i am doing but then in that case i am hiding my own identity that is there again competing interest is a big topic to discuss and there are many many uh, types in that that you need to know when you are uh, publishing your research or doing some experiments approval and consent if you see uh, you have to take approval from relevant authority and even though if i want to conduct a survey of librarians i need to take first permission from my department uh, from the committee departmental committee that this and this and then from the concern authority for example all 100 participants i can take their consent first and then they can if they say yes i'm ready to participate then they can fill up that survey form or whatever question you have sent without consent it is very very difficult otherwise your paper may get in a problem consent of participant especially patients in clinical trial they must is very very must consent of participants involved in any kind of survey in social science arts humanities it is must fabrication is making up the data or results and recording or reporting them falsification is again a manipulation of research material or equipment or processes and many times we have seen uh, manipulation of images and false peer review process that it is they mention that it is done the peer review but when paper get published we realize the peer review has not been done there is many objectionable data is there so some kind of misconduct at that level is going going on now let us see the publication ethics so what we have seen research ethics and ethical uh, norms for the research we see some of the misconduct and some of them i am going to uh, talk in my later uh, part of this talk publication whenever there is a research so good research is result into good publication so your research if you do it ethically your publication may not get rejected at all it may not get rejected it will come back for revision but it will not first act very attract that it is get rejected from editorial board because editor first see it if it is good then it will go to the public other or go to the reviewers otherwise it will get rejected so if you have research is done very very honestly following all uh, ethical uh, elements and what we have talked it will go for a good publication otherwise it will come back and that is why many times we think uh, that why papers are not getting published there should not be always uh, kind of misconduct in the research but then there are many other players that we are going to discuss 
publication ethics are the rules of or rules of conduct generally agreed upon when publishing results of scientific research and other scholarly work generally it is a standard that protect intellectual property i'm going to talk about what is a journal and what why journals are very very important in, in academic field when you are in academics so publication ethics that you are adhere to the some standard principles when you are publishing uh, those are standard publishing practices and then you are you will get the credit after that after publishing it so credit and scientific um, research goes uh, in this publication part so publication ethics that you have to follow the rules in publishing for example if uh, you have to decide that what kind of scientific data should go to the public it should not be harmful to the public and that is why there is uh, there are committees and there are code of conduct and rules that you have to follow take the permission especially when it is dealing with the humans and animals publication misconduct there are many more and all of us are alternate day or sometimes we uh, get mails that uh, several mails to publish in our research and others uh, so that is that is a part of our life nowadays and all librarians should get familiar with this so first that it is plagiarism and self plagiarism is being discussed a lot a lot and lot about plagiarism especially when we are doing phd's and your students are doing phd's and around Uh, students around or writing papers it should go to plagiarism check but i just want to uh, share with you that any software will not give you plagiarism but it gives you text similarity that in your paper this is the text matched to the other that doesn't mean the plagiarism plagiarism is a kidnapping idea that somebody else's idea you have taken as it is and you are pretending it is mine so lot has to be learned in plagiarism also it's not just matching of the text because software tools are doing their job perfectly they will find out the matching of the words and give you the results but we have seen 60% similarities but there is no plagiarism there is 10% or maybe 2% that their the idea is plagiarized and that comes out later on due to some whistle blowers uh, in in the world they they dig out the problem and then so plagiarism we need to learn in depth what it is exactly submission fraud that salami publications are attempting to publish already published manuscript doing some here and there changes redundant publications or uh, the fraud or misconduct in submitting ethics in authorship retraction of papers and paper mills this also i'm going to talk so paper mills is current trend what is uh, when we talk current trend it's a very positive thing i know but uh, when we talk paper mills it's it's a more negative part and i have an example we'll share with you duplication of images if you see elizabeth beck who is a research integrity expert she has found almost many papers she has worked on and she she initially observed some duplication of images but when she started working i think she has found uh, more than 800 600 to 800 papers and she has listed it on her uh, blog that these papers have duplicate images like this this is especially she is working on western blot images and uh, which uh, images from separate experiment in four figures this uh, in a paper so these figures have similarity if you see those uh, color color coding so she is continuously working and many many papers after her investigation are retracted and those are from not necessary from predatory but many good journals which are indexed in web of science and scopus and many other databases uh, plagiarism uh, again i am coming back to plagiarism so maybe i will skip some of the these slides because we have already talked it is that it is in greek and latin word you are kidnapping somebody's idea not the text uh, so that we have to remember like images data and other words which are very prominent or results of that research you are kidnapping somebody's kidnap not the introduction part or maybe literature review you will get similarity but if you get something in results that is very very serious part so what is not considered as a self plagiarism that somebody has delivered a talk then it is not 
or translated words, self citations are not come under the self plagiarism, but self plagiarism is again a misconduct that somebody is, has published some paper earlier, few years back, it is reproducing the same thing, but doing just changes here and there. So UGC has also banned on self plagiarism. Conflict of interest that uh, I, I have only talked about it, but there are some other other misconduct like mentorship exploitation, unethical relation to humans and subject, animal subject, peer review. There are many that we have read about bias in peer review, financial accountability, CV boosting, and there are many more misconduct in research and publication. This is an example. If you see this, this is one project. Out of that, there are 33 papers or from one study, 33 papers are published, and which is called Salami Publications. It is it is actually a fish cut into the pieces, and they do several recipes. So it is applicable here that only one project, and you have cut it into several papers. And if you see, their titles are similar. Their uh, other things are similar. Only they have changed the state name, and it is a big misconduct. But identification of such misconduct is a role of library. I'm going to take your role or I will talk about what we can do as a library science professional every uh, time, whenever I feel I'm, I will share with you. Unfair authorship, again, uh, as um, we all are knowing that there is an author for each paper and uh, authors, I think one author paper, two author, three author, and now we have 200, 300 authors papers, uh, authored papers are there. So there are different types of authorship. Again, if we start talking on it, I need some more time for that. But so honorary authorship, ghost authorship or gift, where in all of these people, those who are not involved in the research, but get the authorship. And there are many such cases uh, are listed on Committee on Publication Ethics website. Please check it out. This is a retraction watch. Uh, and I think all of us should have continuously subscribe this table of content or alert from this blog. This is a good blog where they uh, mention about or they disclose the various cases of unethical practices in research or even in publication. So daily they are uploading and they have maintained the database of retracted paper. This is a very uh, famous case of hydrochloroquine during COVID. And we know this paper was retracted and there was a big news in, in the scientific world. This is the database what Retraction uh, Watch maintains and it clearly gives why these papers are retracted. So if you see in the middle, plagiarism of article, concern issue about the data, duplication of images, and many more reasons they have given why these papers are retracted. But they disclose it with names and everything. And if you see these, again, papers are published in good journals. These are some of lots and lots of papers submitted on Corona, especially during the Corona period of pandemic. And many papers are retracted. That data also is available in public domain. Paper mills, which I said, uh, it is a big misconduct and it is being talked or being discussed many times in many papers and on blogs, on the internet. Paper mills are the companies that produce papers uh, in advance and they sell the papers or maybe they create papers based on your keywords. We know that there are um, what we say uh, paper mills for PhD thesis that you will get thesis ready-made. There are uh, uh, project paper, paper project mills that you get a project ready-made project from uh, companies you have to pay 15,000, 20,000 or it depends on the topic which field you are so they charge 10,000 to maybe 2 lakhs up to that. We don't know, but you will get ready made. So this also has been uh, very, very much discussed in literature and on internet, you will get several such papers generated. Another method that uh, these three definitions, as I said, for example, uh, what Elizabeth Bick, she said that the companies that produces scientific papers on demand. For example, China, she quoted that to acquire MD degree, medical doctors are the buyers of research papers who do not have time to do actual research. Whereas Moore uh, in the nature, uh, he mentioned that 
writing bogus papers for bogus researchers in thousands and such papers are generated either by machine or people there are software programs developed um, that mit case uh, is very much famous they develop three students they develop that site Sci sigen program and then there was a math gen program but that was to uh, disclose the unethical practices in conferences and conference papers so these paper means are generating paper this is very interesting image i found cartoon i found that for better science is again a very good blog that we should uh, subscribe so they are ordering the paper and look at that what they are asking we will take a herbal soup that is a general one but with nanoparticles on cancer cell and impact factor over 3 so they are asking for a paper and such papers are on sale this is one of the paper mill from russia there are paper mills in India, there are paper mills in all over the world. Iranian paper mills are again very, very famous and people get papers ready-made from this. But though I am telling this, don't try to go into this because there are programs developed by publishers which detects paper, paper mills generated research papers. Uh, yes, it is a hard work to find out such papers, but many times to identify such papers that they write or if you go through the text, it is nonsensical text. There is no meaning from one word to other word. I'm writing one paper on this and uh, soon I will publish it in newspapers also and in one journal that how kind of different nonsensical text they are publishing. So this is one of the example and this site is selling the papers. And as a librarian, we must know all this. We should know the practices going on. Good practices, equally bad practices. So if you see this uh, order number they have given, this paper will release in April 2023. And there are places available for sale. So I don't know who is the second, third, fourth author. If I want first place, I have to pay more, uh, more money. So these are such kind of practices are going on. Then one of the major, uh, major work we are doing in this UGC cell and for last two three years that predatory journals uh, to identification of predatory publishers and create a good list of journals or a reference list of quality journals so during that we we came across many unethical practices so before i start talking about journals and uh, predatory journals i just want to tell you functions of a journal see journal is a container which carries the research from laboratory to society or in case of social sciences from society to society that for social science arts humanities laboratory is a social society and data is collected from society and giving back to the society and to carry that you need a container and that is a journal primary source and which started in 1665 and at that time in very first issue in philosophical transaction of the royal society which was published in 17th century Oldenburg and Hook, they have written the functions of journal and very, very interesting. And that is why I, have, I want to talk to you. The register, it gives a function. What are the four functions? First is registration of author's claim to the work. That I have done this work and now I want to get a recognition or claim for that. So my date stamp should be there. Certification that it has been peer reviewed or it has peer reviewed and they have checked whether it is not harmful to the society or useful to the society and then it will if it is not it will come for the revision i have to do a re-experiment and then publish it so it should be conducted properly or not that that certification you get dissemination of course it is for the circulation and to send it to the society and fourth one is very important archiving for future generation so both like you get your um, credit for your work and it will go in archives for several generations so it should be done very properly with ethical principles you should follow in doing research and even in publication so academic journal and standard publishing practices maybe this is again a repetition but it is academic journal is a distinctive form of publishing it has typesetting it has standard format editorial board peer review so if you submission uh, procedure should be there there are editors, authors, reviewers, they are involved. And there is a time span for the publication and archival of publication. 
very very important aspect is accessibility that whatever you have done today is it accessible for many many generations after uh, like in future how many generations they will access this so whether it is in print form or it is in completely online form we do not know about online but print we know how much life print or paper has or ink has but we do not know how long that our electronic media will sustain or something new will come and earlier you have to do a lot of work for preservation so editorial rigor and peer review processes are very very important in case of whenever you are trying to submit or disseminate the research results whichever you have conducted and you have done very hard work for that why publications in print in why print journals came in why unethical practices we have started seeing last two decades and some of the reasons i could give you here that fear of job loss and publish or perish pressure that whenever when it started after especially six pay commission and in the world uh, according to their own uh, ways or regulations when your uh, your career advancement or any academic purposes or your promotion get attached with the publication then lot of unethical practices started so first thing is that i will get my job i want to sustain i want to uh, continue my job and always i have perish publish or you will get perish that pressure and compulsory publications that created really uh, uh, minus uh, of these publications and first i will give give you some history of this second is that failure to publish in journals indexed in world recognized that there are four types of quartiles of the journal q1 to q4 q1 may be very high impact factor journal i'm not very much happy with impact factor but still high impact factor journal or q2 q3 q4 so in all those quartile journals i i may not be able to publish maybe english is my second language and that is why i'm not able to express there are many reasons for failure to publish in such databases or index journal rejection by standard or respectable journals many times i am getting rejection but from rejection we should learn and that is what we we progress if your paper is not rejected then maybe some problem with the publisher i think or something it is not that first time your paper will get accepted there should be some kind of provision competition among colleagues or desire to score higher i want to go higher i want to gain respect if i have to 200 publication it's not even two publications if you have done a huge contribution you can gain good respect the last one is very very important and that is what i have found in last few years that lack of awareness among research and that is why this lecture is also that there is many many people are not aware many researchers newly joined researchers new uh, faculty members are not i will not aware of what is going on they cannot identify good journals and peer review journals or journals those who are doing uh, publication misconduct so that is why we need to sensitize users and instead of uh, instead of having a battle against peer review journals it is better to sensitize that's what we come to the conclusion what is the definition of peer review uh, journal because this is a big misconduct around us and that is why i want to focus more on this peer review that is this term first coined by jeffrey bell who was uh, working in denver university now he is retired and he started observing some unethical practices so he started listing six seven journal publishers publishing some journals where there are a lot of misconduct he found and publication misconduct forget about research misconduct but at publication level and he started his blog it it went on increasing several thousand he added but then there was a dispute from publishers and finally that blog was shut down by the university but what jeffrey bell is saying that these journals they do not follow ethics research integrity and publication ethics and their number is growing recently i came across two days back there is a book published by uh, simon lakre who is working in cabels directory of creative uh, journals he has published a very small book uh, Uh, which is i think 70 pages book on literary journals and he has list he has mentioned there are 16000 journals which are 
predatory in nature and it is very difficult overall the universe of this publication is 3 lakhs periodicals or journals are published today which are listed in unrich periodical out of that 16000 are predatory and I, we do not know how many are there they are coming and they are disappearing so how to find out these journals so if you go to basic information these uh, titles they they hijack the titles and websites from standard journals so current science which is very good journal leading uh, journal of india we found duplicate of hijacked version of current science and current science alerted its users that there is a duplicate version and don't fall prey with that those publishers these publishers they use international global world journal asian journal asian or american titles in their title this world is there so new researchers they get attracted or they can mention i have published in a journal international something something but that journal may not be necessary in fact in reality international in a scope or editorial world they use improper issn or fake issn we found one issn in five different journals and issn is not very important but when it is included by regulatory authorities that your article should be published in issn then it, then there was a problem these journals always are in multidisciplinary in nature they publish everything from astronomy to zoology it's not really multidisciplinary we do need multidisciplinary but that um, definition of these journals is totally different there are no contact details publisher editors details are not given false locations are given maybe office is in uh, pune but their address is in from singapore or some other place editorial board members are not displayed or they are fake or um, prepared one and many editors are not aware that their names are included in such kind of journals so they lack peer review there is no peer review system so you publish immediately within two days or sometimes backdated some publishers they do that also you pay more money they will publish backdated but remember this everything is it is that we can find out which is which is the article published in predatory journals we can easily find out predatory journals because it's not difficult and that every librarian should know because they are the custodian of information they are the purchasing information and that is why they should be very very careful in purchasing even books and journals and many other reference sources or information sources in their library especially i am focusing on scholarly publication which is in journals so they these journals they don't have any kind of peer review mechanism contains are low quality several typing mistakes are there plagiarized text multidisciplinary and multilingual of course they are open access but very funny things that sometimes they get retrieved contains get retrieved from google scholar or sometimes not so we we do not know uh, again lack of publishing uh, standard publishing practices so there are no reviewers nothing peer review processes are absent you are uh, now familiar that every alternate day we get mail from some publisher that publish with us become editorial board member or we have high acceptance rate uh, uh, we we don't have our peer review policy is very very light and you can we can publish it in two days we don't have article submission guidelines you can submit in any format or there are quick turnaround time you submit today we will publish tomorrow but of course it is based on the money which you are giving they have they follow the false metrics we are uh, known i assume that all of you know how to calculate impact factor of the journal and only journal citation report by clarivate analytics gives impact factor for 14000 around journals approximately but there are some 20 or 25 false impact factor agencies or companies which produce false impact factor of course on payment basis so universal impact factor or global many journals you will find such kind of uh, icons that this is the impact factor by global impact all these are false and fake impact factors false indexing databases librarians know indexing databases because we are familiar with Uh, many uh, print indexing databases like library information science abstract uh, chemical abstract biological abstract and many more 
there are 5,000 such uh, abstract uh, or more than such kind of bibliographic indexing uh, databases available. But these fraudulent and these fake journals, they exploited this also. These predatory publishers came up with false uh, indexing databases. Of course, they you have to pay for that index. These are some of the impact factor, false impact factor logos. If you found in any any journal, don't write, don't send your research to such kind of journals. These are false indexing databases. If you see uh, root indexing, scientific, we don't know about this. When I started looking for which are the false indexing databases and I found many there, the list is very huge. Some of them I have just listed here. These are different types, different types of journals in, within predatory publications. Shoddy or sham journal, they follow, pay and publish. So journals, they are not mimicking the other journal, but they are their own. And they uh, start n number of journals. Today, uh, they have 10 journals. They will have 20 more journals or with just pay and publish model they will follow. Hijack journals, they, they mimic the original reputation, reputable publications with names and logos. Clone journals, they mimic everything. They copy everything. And you cannot identify. I will show you two examples. Which one is the original and which is clone? It is very difficult. And librarians, they should, should familiar with this. Crony publications that many institutional publications are there where editorial board, reviewers, authors, everybody from one institute and such journals are not at all following any standard practices. Can you imagine these two journals? This is the example of, so first one is original journal of Maharaja Sayaji, Rao University of Baroda and this is dark blue color is duplicate journal. We cannot identify which is one uh, printed. This is not online, remember. So print to print clone journal, print to online, online to online. There are many such formats they are coming up daily or regularly. So they confused, create a huge confusion among academic uh, academics and uh, within the scientists. This is another journal Vidyan Prakash, which is again duplicate one. And they use, even this journal is included in UGC care. They are not using any logo, but here they are using logo. They mention it is UGC care and approved even because earlier was UGC approved list and they have used both the words. So no one get uh, questioned that way. But it has some false impact factor, $60 they are charging. So you can immediately identify from look even an impact factor. We know how impact factor get calculated based on the citations. How come print journal will have impact factor? Basic question is that. This is again another example, original and clone one. We, it looked like, but if you go inside, even the original journal here, they have not mentioned, but here they desperately mention about impact factor and everything. So this is really difficult task to identify. And even to file complaint, again, these publishers is is really very very difficult task if we tried about it but then uh, when your case get filed everything such publishers they disappear you can't locate them and that is another headache what are the consequences of these unethical practices in publishing what is happening to the society as i started with first slide if you remember that publication at the center and we have psychology and society and community but what is happening with this kind of publishing? That corruption in science and key sectors such as human health, it is badly affected. In case of journalists, if they take some information from such journals and telecast it from several channels, what will happen? Remember, and we are witness for that during the pandemic. Every day we get some new information, new drug, new information or misinformation from about the vaccine and many other things you should take you not take you eat this you have this many things we have done and this is because we were very afraid of this pandemic we were not aware what is going on and that is why these unethical practices were um, i think duplicated triplicated that time and that is why we need to create awareness among students among researchers among society and communities 
it is damage to the career of researcher damage to the institution reputation and our nation rep nation's reputation loss of money waste of time and efforts again remember the first slide if i replace this with this can you imagine what will happen to the everything will go on just uh, whatever it is without honesty without integrity without anything without any theoretical basis for that research if it goes to the society it will create huge problem and then it is unrecoverable you cannot recover those problem for long time because all is going in a public archive for future generation if they refer such kind of fraudulent research or research done by misconduct and the results it is very difficult that they have to redo it and then find it out that this is not conducted very very honestly so battle against these journals or such kind of unethical practices jeffrey bell was the first one and center for journalology ottawa uh, university in canada they are doing a lot of efforts they have center for journalology very interesting journal center they have uh, in kurdistan they have also come up with some list cabal is a commercial initiative very high cost uh, database but it, they they sell that but they maintain and they have declared recently that there are 16000 journals they have listed in their directory and in india we have ugc care list so i i don't want to talk much on, more on ugc care list today because our talk is on different topic but ugc care is a battle against uh, predatory publications in india now come to the end of my last part and then we will have some question answer role of librarian so if you go to role of library in our traditional law role what it is keepers initially it was keepers custodian bibliographers we know this information scientist intermediary documentation but new roles also we are familiar that is embedded li librarian that you work with experts don't sit in a library don't uh, work with in, in uh, your users as a as a member of their team research librarian digital librarian metadata librarian and very interesting i found scholarly communication librarian there are many posts in the world uh, i came across that i am a scholarly communication librarian and they are helping to researchers from start of their uh, research till they publish their research so they alert users they help users they help researchers in conducting the research in communicating them with the expert and they also uh, increase their awareness about ethical practices non ethical practices in research and in publication they help them in selecting good journals and they create awareness they conduct many things for them and even they help in management of research data and that is why this it's very very fascinating uh, position of librarians and this is very old uh, what jesse shera has mentioned about the librarianship so we are bringing together people and graphic records and that is our role which is very crucial and that has not changed or it will not be changed so we have to remember the humanistic role of librarian so though there is a technology and everything is coming we can play a important role in a society by playing our role like a scholarly communication librarian so whenever we are purchasing i will i will take you to uh, to certain two slides and then i will stop so every librarian and researcher should know in case of publications open access and subscription based journals you should able to differentiate both open access journals green and gold green uh, open access now these color coding is now vanished by sherpa romeo project but it was earlier that gold is not having print counterpart and green is having print plus online so subscription based journals are also moving towards gold open access and there are gold open access mega journals which are surviving totally on apcs there is a big controversy about article processing charges and one of my student who is doing uh, research on uh, this open access mega journals and we found that there are several millions of dollars are spending on uh, apcs from the world to these big companies so i have a question that whether such kind of papers will gain popularity or not in the form of citations that also we are working on it creative common licenses everything and copyright 
we should be aware of this everything whichever is online we should tell users that it is not it is copyrighted you cannot copy and paste many students many many students they do and we should stop them preprints which is again interesting one and it will gain popularity in near future that to avoid the biases in peer review so i have found something if i am sending it to journal it will take long time and somebody in between take my idea so why not to upload paper on preprint server there are many preprint servers and if you go asap bio website you will get list of all these preprint archives so i want date stamp on my idea see idea so that is why i am uploading so as soon as you upload you will get url or doi for your so if anybody try to take it even from that open system they will get cached uh, because they have done some plagiarism from you or they have taken your id institutional repositories we are familiar but equally institutional repositories are not just whatever you have after publication but many publishers they have come up their open access policies and if you go to uh, uh, sherpa romeo project you will find out these publishers are changing their open access policy some publishers allow you to upload submitted paper on institutional repository some publishers we allow accepted version but not published some uh, publishers they will allow you to upload published version some of them they have embargo period all this we should know index journal is again a popular term we should know what does it means research metrics we should know uh, citation impact factor and there are many more scores are coming are those really good or just a quantitative measure standard setting and uh, guiding organization like go paper mills we have already talked predatory journals so all this each librarian should know what competencies they require communication skill of course current publishing trends they should familiar understand the life cycle of research so that they can help researchers and publication publication also has a life cycle and you have to follow that for standard publishing practices management of electronic resources it also has a life cycle of electronic resources so at each step we can uh, we can find out good resources data management services like bibliographic data or numerical data or any because we are catalogers librarians are good catalogers they can help in managing this data information literacy programs and of course reading habits uh, are very important that people don't read these days of course i came across very interesting book gaming uh, gaming the matrix where i found that uh, author has written a very good thing that we we ask we read only metadata these days are we reading the complete text for example we ask people where you have published paper what is the impact factor and then uh, in which journal it is published whether it is in q1 q4 quartile whether it is in web of science or scopus but do we ask what is the research exactly you have done that we we fail in that level many times we read we don't read in that that is why uh, reading habits is also one of the research area then i am taking you some back uh, and in librarianship vision portrayed by pioneers and that we should not forget at all the role of librarian should go beyond technology because when technology came in 60s there was a controversy why do we need libraries if every technology is doing so much of work nowadays also that image is coming up like why everything we are getting google google is like a god we get answer to all our queries why should we go to libraries but technology is not the only solution for that and it goes beyond so these pioneers they have given good uh, direction if you see donar arkal he has given i found this interesting uh, uh, phrase human rights so i what Uh, it was machine rat or human rat he has written and when i uh, see this rats means read analyze translate and select so what he emphasized we don't need machine rat we need human rats for analyzing the data in today's world it is when we are talking about big data when we are talking about artificial intelligence when we are talking about data science don't you think that people uh, researchers they need some support who can read analyze and translate and then select the source swanson also said in 64 dialogue with a catalog our catalogs we need to achieve a lot yet what swanson has uh, painted and he has published 
Shera's triangle I have already shared with you. What Marcia Bet said that librarian in a digital era, knowing the content of the source of information sources in the context of user is very important. Just purchase, purchasing books because we have to finish our grant is not enough. It, it is that whether it is matching. We do some kind of exercises and others, but still we have to go beyond that. Herbert White uh, is very, very popular article, uh, which is the tail and which is the dog. For tell, he is saying technology and librarians and information technology. Technology is the tail of the dog, not the librarianship. Gorman also said twice that overuse of social media and loss of humanistic approach with graphic records is harmful to the society. And here our goal is very, very important. Even Dewey, I found his one of the speech, very, very uh, excellent speech in 1926. What he say, our next century, uh, our next century was her title. If a better way than books is found, we should use it. So we are using it. We are using lots and lots of other media than book, than print. But is it that we can say books are not there? It is. Then, Last two slides, I, have, I know the time is less, but we should remember and follow Ranganathan's five laws of library science, which is a blueprint for us. And if you see this, I, I try to uh, work out with publication ethics and research ethics. So books are for use. Which books? You have to check the credentials of author. As I said, we are working on uh, publications, especially journals and journal publishers. We have to yet work on book publishers. There is a big fraud in case of book publishers also. And we are also witness about that any kind of books are, anybody is publishing book, even on Kindle or open, but we should check the authenticity of those contents. We cannot stop. As Dewey said, we have to accept the new versions, new containers of information. That means if Kindle is there, if it is online, Amazon is publishing, we need to check the credential of the author and what it is published, not just the metadata. So then only the books, or maybe you can replace it with information or any other source, it is for use. Every person, his or her book, and every book it's reader, if you combine these two, should know the current trends in publishing and research, and of course, again, authenticity of the source. Who has created this? What is the credential of the editors? What are the credentials of the publisher? even uh, if it, it is published by John Hopkins University, we, we do not have to take any kind of question that whether publisher, but I don't know if there is publisher, I do not know the name, you should think twice. So skills in tracking down quality information for users, then these two laws will get fulfilled. Save the time of the reader, navigating with them through the web. You have to sit with them, you have to tell them, you have to literate them to create a high quality and accurate guides for the information to this challenging domain that we are doing. Many libraries, they have uh, lib guides, kind of thing guides, but we have to continuously update that so that we are going to save the time of the reader. Because today's reader and researcher is spending 40% time in, in finding the information and only 60% they can give for their research. So we could save their 40% of time. And then the last one, library is a growing organism. As a library grows in terms of its services, the skills of library that will be necessary to deliver these new services. So mobile devices, many other new, new services we have to adopt, we have to embrace. And then uh, we have to, uh, then it will prove that library is a growing organism, not just in case of number of books, but number of services also, number of other uh, literacy programs and many other ways. So I think these are really appropriate one in today's in, in connection with research and publication uh, ethics. The last one I want to conclude with very interesting uh, quote I found in uh, Michael Foucault's book, Archaeology of Knowledge, very famous classic book. If you read this and understand, you will find a lot has been told by Foucault, who is a user of a uh, literature. He has produced a huge literature and libraries are part of his, uh, uh, he used to be there only in libraries and his writings are in enormous in number. What he said in one of his, uh, in this book, frontiers of book are never clear cut. Beyond the title, 
the first line and the last full stop beyond its internal configuration and its autonomous form it is caught up that means there is no just text from top to end but it is caught up in a system of references to other books other text and other sentences so we do give references without that the book is not correct so these references and text what he is saying it is a node within the network therefore the individual text gain its value with respect to its place in the network then we can uh, replace this with not only the book but network information and that is why what he say is not merely containing discrete knowledge put there by its author but if you start to finding these nodes so for example i found very interesting one in this book books on the on one shelf having similar class number they are different in that different difference we have to find out and when user come in the library we should give so this is the last slide what role of library and radford who uh, who did comment on uh, fuko's writing and fuko's another book i found another article is really good the fantasy of library and i was very amazed what he has written uh, radford written about comment on this article what he said on the notes what notes uh, explained by fuko is it reveals the network among records notes within the text to the users to create new knowledge so if we create those notes in all books in the library with the help of technology now technology is assisting in networking of resources text and words however the key issue is to link them in accordance with the pattern that the user expect and here our role to find out correct source and link the correct source is very very important and the quality and authenticity of information should be checked when you are uh, linking that notes i think this is totally different meaning of the library what i uh, learned from his writing and of course from radford's article so i just want to stop here sangeeta ji and i'm sorry for 10 minutes late but we can have question answers from uh, participants thank you so very much uh, dr shubhda ji for delivering a very i know an excellent extraordinary uh, talk that you have delivered you know we are feeling truly you know enlightened uh, uh, with your vast experience that you hold on this subject and that was evident it was such a wonderful amalgamation of your great experience that you hold you are an actual doer we have been knowing about your you know great contributions that you have been doing and closely on this uh, subject of research and publication ethics it has come out all out of your experience and also you had supplemented it so beautifully you know with a well research you know it, it clearly indicated you know the kind of an efforts that you have been bringing in and not many of uh, you know the citations that you have quoted everyone may like to really refer to the full text and would further like to you know get thank you so very much for taking out so much of time and putting in so much of efforts in seeing to it that all each one of us you know truly feel illuminated with your presence and with, uh, what a wonderful uh, presentation that you had not many takeaways you know not many takeaways uh, that you have been and summing it up you know by showing that the role of the librarians and even talking about the human rats that's i think for everyone to remember you know the and what has been there for uh, you know 50 years ago uh, you know what was indicated which really holds relevance even in today's day and time i think we have to realign our own selves as a professionals and humanizing the role of the uh, the professionals that's very very important that you have you know highlighted in such a lucid manner much grateful to you shubhda ji no words can ever express how grateful we have felt and the entire each uh, of our attendees joins us in thanking you on behalf of demet firstly we would like to present a small moment of you know and this is the great <laughs> admiration and respect uh, for you and uh, for all the great deeds that you are doing for the profession and also most importantly the support immense support splendid support you know you are just a phone call away you are you are such a humble and the the finest uh, you know professional that uh, we feel so happy to have around who is always always you know so uh, generous in uh, 
uh, being so supportive uh, to Delnet and also for the professionals at large. Thank you very much. And we really look forward to having many more opportunities uh, to have uh, you with uh, us again in some of the platforms. And as you hold a great experience, you know, and uh, it, 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 I think you should come out with uh, creating a kind of a manual uh, for the library professionals, even for researchers and scholars, because as you have been there, you know, and uh, with the teaching and you have research scholars who are there, you are, you know, uh, addressing uh, to their needs and requirements. I think it would be a great contribution, yet another contribution from your side, if you can create a small manual, even a 25, 30 page manual uh, in out of, and that would be bringing together all these various facets. And that would something, you know, that the professionals would really want to have. With your permission now, we would like to make the floor open for questions. And uh, firstly, I would like to uh, just see some of the questions that we are able to see, which are already posted over here. First question I would like to take, and this is being posted by Mrs. Sheetal Deshpande, the librarian at Dinanath Mangeshkar Hospital in Pune. And she is okay. wanting to know that uh, uh, she's uh, more keen to know about that. Uh, uh, how can we know that we have not retrieved a forged article? And what happens if we cite any article prior to uh, you know that particular article which it gets retracted? So well before the article gets retracted, the professionals are able to know that it was uh, not a genuine article. How really, you know, uh, being a professional firstly, because since she's uh, leading uh, as a librarian at Dina Nath Mangeshkar Hospital, a leading hospital. So she is wanting to know that if, uh, you know, as a professional, when we are giving an article to our users, uh, how to ensure that it is a very genuine reference. And what happens if the article that we have already provided or we cite an article which is uh, an article which is retracted how really to take care of that very very good question uh, uh, from uh, i forgot Sheetal, her name sheetal desh pande mrs sheetal desh pande she is working in uh, dinanath mangeshkar so sheetal it is a good question because uh, many many uh, articles we found in medical sciences more uh, which are published in many many uh, predatory journals and to find out such journals or you have to check the authenticity as i am continuously saying try to search the author name first who is the author from which institute that he is publishing and where he has published and also check the dates turnaround dates of that article whether when it is submitted when it is accepted and what try to uh, find out being working in hospital i think Another uh, area I forgot that you need to know research, latest research trends in many subject area or wherever you are working. If you are in medical field, you need to know what kind of research trends are going on and then you can match it with it. Or talk to any expert whether this article is good or not, whether there is any problem. So from authenticity of author, you immediately come to know. And then check the journal, whether journal is from uh, any standard publisher or not, whether it is... Uh, they have any kind of false impact factor, any indexing databases, grammatical mistakes, website, it is not giving archives or anything. So first check, like preliminary check doctors do, similarly you do it with publication. That first check, what all these criteria, you check it out and then uh, give it to the user. Because if you give directly to the doctors immediately without checking the authenticity, then it may not be good. Some journals are very good and doctors know that. Many doctors, those who are doing research, they know the journals in their area. Many times we give that exercise for researchers to find out top 10 journals in your field, which are very good. Not necessarily always they are having impact factor or anything, but good journals in your field. So if they know, they will understand. And that is why you need to know from many other disciplines. Because within medical science, there are many, many areas. And you need to check the authenticity and then give it to them. Thank you very much, Abdulji. Yet another question coming from Uma Swarna Manjari, uh, from Central Library, Pondicherry University. And she's wanting to know uh, that UGC care list journals are changing every three months. And in such a scenario, how can we publish and select a good one, a good journal? Uh, how really to safeguard, uh, you know, that whatever journal that has been chosen is not among the one which is no longer available uh, in the UGC care list? Okay, I know that the, these common questions I get usually in uh, in case of care list. 
Uh, see, uh, scopers, uh, before go to sc uh, care list, I just want to tell you a few things and facts. Scopers update their list monthly. Uh, Web of Science also in uh, some quarterly or six monthly, they update the list. When journals removing, uh, all this is the database, uh, all these database producers have the common thing that they regularly update the list. So sometimes if you see in uh, Web of Science, there are 13,000 journals indexed or 14,000, sometimes less, sometimes more. And if you see the status of the journal in these uh, website of Scopus and Web of Science Journal Index from 2012 to 2018, then it is removed for next two years, again started indexing 2020 to 2021. So in between the journal is not indexed in that database. Why this is happening? The same thing is happening with care because if you, uh, include any journal in care list and if after inclusion that journal start misbehaving we have to discontinue the journal many times people uh, because initially there are some criteria for uh, including of the journals and that we check so if journal fit into that we include that it goes to rigorous cycle and that is why our inclusion percentage is very very less 15 to 20 percent increase every quarter but that problem was there. Sometimes journals immediately get, uh, get placed into care list and immediately they start misbehaving. So, for example, one example I can give you, uh, journal is publishing, is monthly, it's publishing 10 to 15 articles in one issue. After inclusion in care, some increase is acceptable, but 15 to 20 articles to maybe 30 articles is okay. But can you imagine 200, 300 articles in an issue? If they start like this, that indicates they are not doing peer review. It is not possible to do 200 papers peer reviewing. And that is why they become questionable. And again, we received against such journals grievances. Grievance portal is created. So based on that, uh, we have decided, UGC decided to continuously check it. And now recently, uh, UGC decided to add the uh, coverage of the journal so from which date to which date it is covered and in between if your paper is published it is uh, acceptable uh, for your career advancement and that is why it is to be continuously keep the list clean you have to check it and journals will come in and journals will go like other databases you, care list is not exceptional it is following the same standard like other databases do we ask question to your scopus that why you have removed we don't ask so that is why this list we have to take it up uh, uh, we have to create because this list is divided into two groups first group is having indian journals especially language journals so we have 300 400 language journals these are also many language journals exploited by predatory journals and we have clone versions i i forgot to talk about i just mentioned but clone versions and People start writing in clone version and then they come up that I have written in. So many times clone journals are difficult to identify and their librarians, they should help in that. So even that journal coverage period will help you uh, for considering the journal is there or not. Thank you very much for such an exhaustive uh, uh, clarification. I, I think many of us, you know, would have benefited out of this. Uh, there is a question which is from Mr. Sridharan Anamalai, who is wanting to know, ma'am, that it is noticed that in Scopus Web of Science, the ISSA number which is being listed does not match with the UGC care list. So what to do in such a scenario? No, no, UGC care list is accept, UGC care list, for example, group two, is not downloading the journal list from Scopus and Web of Science and uploading it here. UGC Care has given direct link to Scopus uh, source file and Web of Science master list of journals. It is not download and upload it, nothing. Direct links are provided. So whatever journals included or excluded from these databases, it is not concern of UGC Care. UGC Care group one, if he is talking about because Scopus and Web of Science is in a group two. We are not dealing with them now downloading. But yes, if we receive grievances against Scopus journal, which is misbehaving, UGC Care has taken a step that they delisted. So there are nine journals delisted from Scopus and Web of Science. That is also Care is doing. And that is why these two mega databases, uh, major databases, they are concerned about Care. 
because it is also our practice that if you see the website carefully every quarter 10 to 15 journals get indexed from care to scopus and web of sense so they do believe in care list many journals they picked up after application of these journals into care uh, in scopus and web of sense and that is why we are not dealing with you uh, group two journals not iss in hai or nahi hai. we don't care about it but in care group one there are journals we do not have ISS in number because these journals are publishing several years, like 100 years. They don't concern about ISS. And ISS is not uh, expressing any kind of quality. It is just a number, right? The roll number of a student. It is for libraries and publishers. You are not, you can buy ISS number from anyone. They are not concerned about uh, any quality. So ISS is not uh, very important in case of quality when we check. Thank you very much, Abdajay. We could notice some of our, uh, you know, uh, our professional colleagues here would also like you to, uh, you know, express your views about the plagiarism detection softwares. We have Dr. Prasad M, a librarian of Kumara Guru College of Technology, Coimbatore, and also Mr. Shyam Bachute, who is wanting to know, in your, out of your ex experience, you know, which kind of software would you recommend from for plagiarism uh, checking. Also, they are uh, you know, wanting to know about the similarity index of the plagiarism softwares. So, uh, and there are a couple of others you know, who are also wanting to know. So, uh, would you like to just throw some light on this? Yes, uh, it's a good question. And always people ask me that kind of question related to plagiarism. Actually, plagiarism is, tools are available now, very recently, last few decades we have. But earlier, there was no tools available, no detection tools were available, whether you have done any plagiarism, but still cases are there. For example, I was reading library history and I found, I forgot to share that slide. I found Alexandria library, which is the uh, oldest one. There, there was one librarian, uh, not the librarian as such, but he was looking after the library and he found, he found uh, in one of the poetic uh, program, poem, that program, he found that that uh, author has uh, uh, steal the poems from someone else and that was the maybe first case before that even so people used to find out the plagiarism cases that copy somebody's uh, uh, text is copied but plagiarism in this case now if you go uh, now we are in electronic era and huge amount of data is generated information is generated in that case just matching of date information is not enough for example, uh, there is a public knowledge, common knowledge, which get matched in our uh, in these reports. Uh, these this can be omitted, or the, you can exclude that kind of knowledge information. But just matching text is not. It is a similarity score, but not a plagiarism. It is not giving that you have copied someone else's idea, and that is why preprints are coming like anything, and it will gain a very popularity in future because they are in open platform and those who are uh, having the first idea, if they write a paper, it goes to the preprint archive and that will get catch from uh, our uh, tools. Tools are good. They are trying to match the words which you have taken it from and whether you have given any credit or not. But pleasure is a much, much more than that. You, you have to think. So read a lot about plagiarism it is really a theft of idea. It is not just copy paste. Text when it comes after your idea get published, when you work on your idea in laboratories, then your text will come out. If that idea get, we, we know the DNA helical story. They, they steal the Rosen, uh, Rosalind Franklin's uh, notebook from the laboratory. And then she got the Nobel Prize after uh, her death. And that kind of plagiarism, stealing notes stealing ideas is a plagiarism text in case of what he is asking any software you can but the first plagiarism is myself i am one software i know from where i have taken correct why do you need software when i am honest and that is my honesty am i honest why you need software you have to ask this question yourself and you will get the answer very wonderfully said. Wonderful, wonderfully said, uh, and thank you very much for this. We have Dr. Ishapa Bhanti from Bits Pilani who is wanting to know. He says, 
uh, that the librarian's collection development is based on the recommendations from the faculty and the departments, then how much are they responsible for unauthorized publications added to the collection? That if those selection committees, you know, because uh, he's more concerned that as in the libraries, we have our collections, which are all being you know, recommended by uh, the faculty or by the departments. And, uh, and once you know, they are recommending something which is not really uh, a genuine work, so how far are they or the library professionals who are there, how the professionals, library professionals, most importantly, how can they safeguard themselves in the scenario? That yes, is, yes. yes, there are many is, books. Many, uh, that is correct that we have our own procedures to purchase books and even priority list. We talk to people, we take recommendations. Bits Pilana is that way very different uh, institution. Maybe you are getting uh, all good books and good. But uh, still, if you check uh, in case of books, it is okay. But if you check journals and articles and online information, because Bits Pilani and others, they, they are dealing with a lot of all online information. And there our role is. Books is one of them. Book is for us. Keep it in mind. Internet is one of the source for us. Like book on a shelf, there is internet on the shelf. Nothing else. But that internet is creating large number of, huge number of problems. That internet, we have huge unauthentic information. There are many books on internet which are not authenticated, which you need your help to authenticate. And for authentication of books, you need to check again author credentials, publisher credentials, check when it has written, dates, everything. And then you can check even if you get uh, uh, through uh, uh, Turnitin or others that whether it is matched with any. So it's a huge process to give authentic information. It's not just Many times I get a question that library has subscribed 10 databases and we have given remote access and others. What is your role in that? That can be done by any other institute, any other person in the institute. Management, they can buy, why they need librarians then? If they have everything online, we don't need librarians. And that was the pioneers, they have alerted us that technology is not all at all. We, we should give our role our role as a humanistic, we should keep that in mind. There is human touch and face, nothing will happen. And that is why librarians uh, need to be very, very careful even buying books. Many Recently, I can share you ex experience. We had one book exhibition here and very glossy, nicely, uh, which nice books were there. And I thought, and all library science books, I said, how come so much of glossy paper and these books. And when I opened these books inside, it was rubbish. Literally. One book I found written digital library and inside there was a classification catalog. No mention about digital library. Can you imagine? And that is why our role goes not only at preface level, it should go content and inside the book. That is why we, we should be very, very careful. I hope I answered. Thank you very much. One more question coming from, this is from Dr. Rajesh Kumar Pandey, the librarian at Sri Lal Bahadur Shastri National Sanskrit University here at Delhi itself. And uh, the question is that, Madam, sometimes in survey research, the responses in the desired sample size are not received the way it was supposed to. In your opinion, what is your suggestion to the researchers in this regard so that researchers should not engage in the manipulation of data? This is uh, a question yes, which but... is... Oh, hmm. Correct. That is a drawback of questionnaire technique and survey method. We know that. We learn it. And that, that those drawbacks we have to overcome. You should not then adopt only one questionnaire method. You, are, you supplement it with focus group studies. You supplement it with observation. You supplement with other techniques. Because that is why questionnaire has its own drawbacks, plus and minus. People, and then how you are designed, how you have designed the questionnaire. Is it too big? Why will people respond to you? It should be very uh, crisp and what you want. That is why designing questionnaire is a creative work. It's not that you are just designed. And then you have to take consent of the user that whether you are willing, because whenever uh, there is a survey without uh, informed consent, then that, that will not get accepted. The results will not get accepted in many journals because they want to know your questionnaire. And that is why they want to see your questionnaire and data 
and they immediately find out whether you have taken proper consent or not and that is why i know users are less you have to supplement it with other uh, data collection methods if there are no enough responses we can't do that thank you very much uh, shubha ji one more question which it looks to be but i'm able to see so much of interest you have been able to generate and that's evident from the questions uh, back to back questions which it's the chat box is getting flooded with this this is a question from mrs geetha ji and she is wanting to know that madam when we check thesis of a research scholar for plagiarism shall we exclude the articles published by the same scholar is it acceptable according to self plagiarism rule of ugc so when they are checking for the thesis of a one particular researcher scholar so shall they exclude the articles published by the same scholar and is it acceptable mm -hmm. you know she is wanting to uh, you know know about from self plagiarism uh, rule of ugc like uh, which are you know uh, it's not permitted you know that the scholar should engage in self plagiarism so how really uh, what is a kind of uh, your take on this and what message would you like to give it so self plagiarism should not be there at any case if you are doing for example i found some cases like in medicinal plants people are doing uh, in research on very small area geographical area only that plant grows there or some kind of unique topic if you are working where others are not working in that case you can give your earlier reference that will never become and your current project is extension of your earlier so in that case you can give your old references but you should not exclude that from uh, plagiarism check unless until it is very rare case but otherwise self plagiarism self self citation is not a good conduct it is a misconduct always unless until it has exception perfectly fine now we have mr sandeep sharma who has some concerns about some of the impact factor which has been reflected i believe in the indian journals it uh, uh, perhaps has been taken from there and then he's trying to say that they are the aggregators and uh, and the uh, you know the title of the particular journal should have been mentioned instead of the platform uh, this is from mr sandeep sharma that uh, he's just wanting uh, you know to highlight that yes so impact factor what i said is uh, only given by journal citation report of clarivate analytics it is get counted based on two years of impact factor so journal published one journal is published if you take 2007 the issues published 2008 number of issues published and both the years get citations in 2007 and 8 both the journals for two years of citations is it and in the third year you can count it uh, 2007 and 8 journals if you check the citations in 2009 and then based on that some of the articles and some of citations if you uh, uh, do the calculation then you will get the impact factor so for that citation is your input for that calculating impact factor but other false impact factor on what basis they are giving we don't know their method of calculating the site some journals they give uh, based on google scholar citations and we have calculated use the formula by clarivate but google scholar i have questionable lot of questions about google scholar because it is not a curated database like web of science it is non curated it is operated by machine so any in uh, weird references you will get any citations you get sometimes your name is included in some when else is uh profile i have seen many such cases in case of google scholar so how can you rely on that that is why only 14000 journals have clarivate analytics impact factor others are literally uh, fake and false uh, like uh, generated one pay and generated one so you should be very careful about it Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shubha Ji. It seems that we are towards the conclusion of this wonderful uh, session, and uh, I think we all, all of us, you know, would agree with the fact that uh, you know, you since you hold such a great experience, uh, uh, practical experience on this subject, you must really at least create some ethic use on this, on uh, research and publication ethics, and not only because you have lot much of you know, uh, you know, the experience. So. 
concerning everything, what, whatever you feel uh, that our researcher and scholarly community would be pondering about, I think there's a greater need and you have got all uh, the wonderful expertise with you. You should really create that and that would be a, uh, something that the researcher and scholarly community would always be wanting. So, and if that can be available, you know, as as a uh, as a, a portal uh, on the Pune University website, on on your wonderful blog, you know, that would be a great contribution. This is what we are able to notice because I would like to apologize to our some of our colleagues here. You are still, uh, you know, posting your messages because of paucity of time. We may not be able to. Uh, Dr. Shubhaji, could you please just uh, because some of them are wanting to know about your email ID, if you may just kindly share yes. with them, and yes. uh, we can also would be informing them separately also about it. Yes. Can you just uh, just tell it to them? And uh, because there have been some two or three who have written about it that uh, yes. we would also Sorry. like to mention. Yes, please, kind. Can I you, you can type put it in the chat in box. In the chat box, yes, you can write it in the chat box. Yes. Yes, that's there. That's great. Thank you so very yes. much. We have got it. So uh, please kindly, you can uh, keep a note. It's being uh, posted uh, by Dr. Shubhaji in the chat box and all of you would be able to see uh, the contact details. And you're most welcome uh, to uh, communicate uh, to our distinguished speaker of this afternoon who has so exhaustively, you know, it's hats off, we truly appreciate and admire uh, your spirits and the wonderful work that you are doing it. And you have been able to take out so much of time rescheduling your own, you know, academic work and you have been able to take out so much of time that really speaks volumes of your commitment to also to the other uh, professional colleagues and researchers and scholars uh, so that they are in a, you know, they have, everyone has felt totally, you know, feeling enlightened enough not many takeaways for everyone and i would just like to seek your permission that can we post this in our uh, youtube channel of delnet so that many more because they are sending across the messages saying that can we have this presentation file from adam so uh, we would like to uh, send across uh, you know upload this entire presentation file the entire video recording of uh, this wonderful session on our youtube with your consent if you give it to us yeah. i will yeah. tell you but Thank you so much. And I want to put forth my thanks to all those who are helping me in doing this. My uh, uh, Center for Publication Ethics staff, university authorities, UGC authorities, and all nodal officers of UGC care. They are helping us and I'm learning from all of them. And uh, so I want to thank all of them for doing this. And a lot and a big thanks to Professor Bhushan Patwardhanji who uh, initiated the care project and who always is an encouragement for us and providing huge energies to work hard. And because of his uh, suggestions and efforts, we could establish this center in this university. And center is uh, really doing a hard work to disseminate the information and organize the workshops in this field to sensitize the users. So thank you, Sangeeta Ji, for this thank opportunity. You, Dr. Shubhaji, it has been a great honor and pleasure. And also on our behalf, do convey our warm, sincere thanks to the entire team at Center for Publication Ethics. And I think you can definitely can, you know, work on creating, having a special uh, publication from Center for Publication Ethics, you know, a publication which is a manual on best practices, you know, for uh, publication and research ethics. And that would be a great contribution. And then yes. it would always feel happy to, you know, promote it among the entire, not simply in India, but across. Uh, and that would yes. be, uh, but because we are able to see it, you know, through the deliberations here, that everyone is really wanted to get more enlightened and a lot much of clarifications, clarity is required on the things. And especially this handholding has to happen between the library professionals and the respective researchers and scholars. And all of us should contribute collectively in a very cohesive and in a collaborative manner. Uh, you know, there can be a forum, you know, wherein anyone and everyone can just can interact and get benefited with the, you know, so there can be a kind of a good, uh, not only a group, but also whatsoever the knowledge sharing happens, if that can also be, you know, archived, that can also be reused, uh, you know, in some ways. And uh, I think that's one of the recommendations that we can always can say coming out of this wonderful uh, deliberations. So on one, behalf of Delnet, yes, yes. One thing, one thing I just want to make appeal to all librarians as uh, this work belongs to librarians and we, we can contribute a lot and make our nation's name proud. Because a lot of time we have seen in the literature that India is 
uh, is always uh, talk in a bad part that a lot of predatory insurance in India. But believe that is not the case only in India, it is all over the world. But if librarians could we come up uh, and you can suggest good journals because you are the best people in your area, in your language, you can send good journals to the UGC care uh, through the port website of the with your name so that we can uh, say that all these librarians and we want to make this as a moment, uh, a big moment to eradicate this predatory journals. So all of your help without your help, it is really difficult task for me alone. So thank you, Sandeep Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Shabdaji. And we would like to also thank all our, you know, distinguished attendees of this session who have been able to join us from different nooks and parts of the country and have made this session truly an engaging, uh, highly engaging, highly knowledge sharing session. And uh, it has been a great honor and pleasure for Delne to have organized it. We really look forward to many more opportunities to having uh, back each one of you. And we would once again, uh, I you know, uh, would like to truly admire uh, Dr. Shubda Nagarkarji's prolific work that she is being engaged with. Uh, and uh, we really wish you the very best and we really look forward also to having you back again. Uh, and it has really been so very kind of you to have been able to spare so much of time. And also, you know, with the, uh, you have been able to, you know, resolve the queries of all, everyone, you know, nothing has been left, you know, unattended. And uh, we could see that this has truly been a highly, highly enriching and then, uh, you know, everyone is feeling truly uh, enlightened you know with your presence today thank, thank you very you, much once again shubhaji and uh, uh, we really look forward to also inviting you sometime and and we, we really would look forward to having a publication coming out you know soon yes. from you thank you so yeah. much yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you so very much so thank you indeed yeah thank you very much thank you one and all once again and it has been a pleasure i would just like to mention to each one of our uh, colleagues over here today that delnet will be organizing its 25th a uh, national convention on library information and uh, networking from uh, December 14 to 16th online. You will soon be notified about it. And in that also, on the very first day, that is on 14th of December, we are going to have a tutorial session, which is again for researchers and scholars. And uh, we would truly appreciate the presence of each one of you. And we would be you know, not notifying you with the registration links and other things. Thank you so very much once again. And it has been a great honor and pleasure. Thank you very much, Abdul Jay. We can't really thank you enough. It's a very small expression of how grateful we are for all your, you know, the great contribution and the great cooperation that you always extend to us. Thank you very much. Thank you one and all, and uh, wishing you a very good evening and wishing you the best of the times so, ahead. Hey, God bless each one of you, and we really look forward uh, to having you back again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abdul Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, God bless. Thank you very much.